Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. We have a special guest back today, Tyler O'Neill. He's a commentator. He's a writer. He's been on active media across the country, including Fox News with Tucker Carlson. He has a new book out that is blowing the lid off what is going on at the Southern Poverty Law Center. Welcome back, Tyler. Hey, glad to be here, Barry. Tell people where they can get your book and give us the name, please. Yes. So it's called Making Hate Pay, The Corruption of the Southern Poverty Law Center. You can find it on Amazon, search Making Hate Pay, or you can search on Google and it is the first result. So Making Hate Pay on Amazon. Terrific. So let's jump right in. How does the SPLC look at President Trump? They're an anti-hate group. Where does Trump fit into their agenda? Well, Trump is, I, I'm not sure exactly the percentage they would say, either 66 or 70% of the hate that they monitor. Um, the SPLC actually recently came out with its uh, hate map right in, right in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. And they mentioned Trump 66 times in their report. Uh, they went overboard to smear Trump, uh, saying that he's connected to hate by using guilt by association. And it's like one time after another, after another, after another. And they've attacked the Trump administration before uh, on specifically for calling out radical Islamic terrorism and some of the Trump administration uh, alums who either went to work for or worked for before uh, organizations like uh, the Center for Security Policy uh, have been attacked by the SPLC. But I think it was particularly noteworthy when their group, I mean, I, I read the report and I did a, a search, you know, control F, and it came up with 66 references to Trump in their hate group report. It's almost as though, you know, they're doing a a campaign contribution for Joe Biden. I've got to ask you this because it's all over the news. In fact, it's the only thing on the news besides COVID-19. So you've made it clear, Tyler, the SPLC hates Trump. How do they react to the BLM movement, the Black Lives Matter movement? Well, they're big fans. Uh, they're not necessarily fans of Antifa, or at least they wouldn't want you to think so, but they are, they do carry water for Antifa. So when Trump came out and said, look, Antifa should be designated a terrorist group because you have these riots that are killing, you know, I've, I've been following this. There are at least 22 people who've been killed in these, in these riots caused by Antifa and Black Lives Matter. And you know, not to say that, you know, most of the protesters were peaceful, but they, the protests did devolve into riots. You can't ignore this. There were buildings burned. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the businesses that were destroyed were black owned businesses. And yet somehow they're, they're not part of the, part of the black lives that matter. And so let, me, let, me, let me be clear on the question. So nobody disputes the concept that black lives matter. All American lives matter. I'm talking about the movement that's run by self-avowed Marxists. They, they're very proud of their training. They're very proud of their philosophy, which is capitalism belongs in the dustbin of history, and they would like to see America uh, completely restructured economically and socially. That is the BLM I'm asking you about. Are you saying that the SPLC supports a movement that wants to recast America in a socialist Marxist image? So, yes. And the, the interesting thing is they support the movement and they support the ideas, uh, but I'm not sure exactly where and how much they've, they've stood up for it. They have insisted over and over again that Black Lives Matter is not a hate group. Oh, here, here we go. Um, in June, they attacked mass resistance for, for attacking the, the Marxist-Leninist push 
at the center of the official Black Lives Matter movement. And the SPLC says that this includes racist dog whistles against the movement. And <laughs> well, naturally, mass resistance calls the BLM, you know, those who engage in violence with BLM, thugs. Oh, oh, that's racist, apparently. That's racist. <laughs> it's like, no, uh, white people can be thugs too. Anybody who's destroying property and threatening people's lives is a thug. So, yeah, well, there, there you have it. They defend, and they're smart about it, right? The SPLC doesn't come out with a platform and say, oh, we want to fundamentally alter society. But they do say, look, the movement to defund police is good, and you shouldn't be criticizing it. They do say things like that. So you, ha you have to be a little careful when it comes to saying who and what the SPLC supports, but they're, they're doing more than winking at this point. Uh, so, so I got to ask you this, after listening to all of your insights and evidence that is just pouring out of you, when we talked earlier in a previous episode, we agreed that the origins of this organization were, nor uh, were noble and some decades ago they were the only refuge and the only hope for someone fighting back against racism and bigotry in the country. It sounds to me from the sidelines that the SPLC has gone from that into some sort of progressive activation group with hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, I guess, stashed all over the world in these offshore accounts to affect their political wishes. And, you know, that fighting bigotry and racism thing that got them going, well, that's so 1980s. I mean, do they care anymore about racism and bigotry and equality and so on? Or is it, is it a political group now? They would say that they care. Um, I'm and, asking you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Uh, so the SPLC, it's an activist group, and they care about racism to the degree that they can slam their political opponents as being racists. But they don't seem to care as much about it when it comes to the SPLC's own history of not elevating Black people to positions of influence. And of course, you know, they, they'd say that that's over, and I'd like to believe them, but I don't know where exactly the evidence is because they're not coming out with this internal review. But what we do know is that Black former employees compared the SPLC to a plantation, and that female former employees said that Morris Dees got it on at the office. Like, not, you, you know, he was hardcore going after women who worked there. And we know this from his own accounts uh, and from his divorce papers in that fateful year of 1986, where he admitted to having affairs with women, get this, who were applying to work at the SPLC. If that doesn't make you, you know, if that doesn't get all the Me Too whistles blowing, well, then I don't know I what does. I haven't heard about the Me Too against the SPLC. So here's the big closing question. They're not what they used to be. I'm not sure what they are now, but it doesn't sound that great. But the money's still pouring in. What does the average person do to fight back? God forbid if you're on the list. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you buy my book, uh, which of course is naturally what I'd say. Uh, but I, I do believe it. We have to get this message out there. And we have to let people know, people in positions of authority, those who are uh, reporters, those who are politicians. Uh, just this week, the Columbus City Council is considering banning police, like they're, they're finding a way to keep police members who had been members of hate groups from becoming police in the city of Columbus. And they have started deciding what counts as a hate group by referencing the Southern Poverty Law Center. So if you hear in your neighborhood, in your city, in your state about 
you know, if you see your local paper citing the SPLC, go to them, write a letter to the editor, say, look, this is not professional. At least, at the very least, you need to say this organization has problems, is corrupt, is facing multiple lawsuits. In my book, I go through quite a few of the lawsuits. But, and, and just, you know, do what you can to fight back. And they have a big presence in schools. So one of the ways that you can fight back is to figure out whether your local school is using Southern Poverty Law Center materials. And if they are, go to them and say, look, this is an organization uh, credibly accused of racial discrimination, sexual harassment. Oh, and by the way, they run this profitable hate for pay scheme that brings them in millions of dollars and which, has, which former employees said is a marketing ploy, is bilking donors. So, you know, this is the kind of organization that should not be taken seriously. And you can make a concrete difference if you see in your sphere of influence somebody following the SPLC. And it's out there. They send their, their uh, teaching tolerance to most schools across the country. So that's a very quick and simple way to start. If, if we can get my book in the hands of administrators and teachers and those who make the decisions on the school board, we can really make a positive impact. Really an ugly picture. Uh, I'm glad you came on to talk about it. Uh, we really appreciate your time today, Tyler. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Barry. And for those of you that haven't subscribed to ATP's mobile system yet, take out your cell phone, please, and text the word TRUTH. Send it to 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed. You'll get shows like this one with Tyler O'Neill for free on your cell phone and you don't have to do anything. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Nussbaum.